Oh, no, no disrespect to you, Jim, but he's an African-American. I knew he was going to be tough. <laughs> what happened there in the 12th round, man, September the 6th, 2014, T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live. Adrian Broner has problems with pressure fighters. Adrian Broner cannot defend against the left hook. Adrian Broner's foot movement is still questionable. Adrian Broner's punch output when under pressure on the back foot is questionable. Adrian Broner's punch output, period, is questionable. But see... He will always be an exciting fighter. He will always put people in the seats. But when you look at the fights he provided, and you look at now that he's had two fights at 147, two fights at 140, and he has yet to hurt either of these four fighters or knock down or knock out either of these four fighters. For example, today he took on Emmanuel Taylor. Emmanuel Taylor has two losses, now three losses on his career, most notably against Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri went on to fight Ruslan Provodnikov, beat Ruslan Provodnikov, and now Chris Algieri is fighting Manny Pacquiao. So Chris Algieri, even though, excuse me, um, Emmanuel Taylor, Emmanuel Transformer Taylor, even though he has, hold wait, let me hear what AB has to say, hold on. We're live, so this is right after the fight. So now, you have the confidence back, not that you've ever really lacked for confidence, but to move on from what happened against Madonna and now get right back into the thick of it. Hey, listen, I don't know where you grew up at, but I, think, I, I came from the bottom. And so I know what it feel like to be at the bottom, you know? And um, we, we still pushing, we still on top. Our, our name got bigger, our fame got bigger. You know, and um, it is what it is, man. I'm still getting paid that, that one type check, figures. You talked about Lucas Matisse in the meeting. You've talked about him this week. You've kind of called him out. Is that who you would like to fight next? Listen, like I said before, I didn't kind of call out nobody. I said, my next fight should be Matisse. And he can't get it. He can. So you will instruct your promoter, your manager, and listen, all of those folks behind you to make that fight. Listen, if it was up to me, I'd fight Matisse with this cut on my eye tonight. Well, he didn't have much work, so maybe you want to come on out here. The fans are still here. Man, I'll beat his ass, too. <laughs> Adrian, it's good to be here in Cincinnati. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Right. Okay. I like, I like. And for everybody to know, the after party at Cameo, get there, it's going down. I like, I like, I like Jim Gray. He's been instigating a lot of shit tonight. Now, if you hear what, this is live. The fight just went off. That's the actual live right after the fight. I'm shocked because to hear him say that, I'm thinking, my God, he's going to get slaughtered. But one thing you cannot say about Adrian Broner is he don't got no bitch or no pussy in him. And God bless his heart. But putting him up against a Lucas Martin, Matisse, 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 the machine is going to be an end to Adrian the Problem Brona. He'll go along the lines of being that Zab Judah-ish type of fighter. You know, it's a shame, but he put himself in a situation where he's like, you know, I said I want him next. So now you got Al Heyman in a situation, his manager, advisor, promoter, like, damn, why would he, damn, I got to make him fight Matisse. You know, but Matisse is not worried about Adrian Broner. Matisse is on some shit like, I want Danny Garcia. So everybody asking him about, well, Broner calling you out. He's like, yeah, I fight Danny Garcia with, I mean, four or four non-title, whatever the case may be. So you're thinking to yourself, like, well, damn, you got Broner that's saying, look, I want you. And people are surprised at that. But then you got Matisse saying, no, fuck him. He's small bees than me. I want Danny. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. What I'm going to be doing in about another hour or two hours after this video, I'm going to be live streaming. Also, if you want to see um, Showtime All Access, link right below um, Real Combat Media. I have a Facebook page. Oh, let me read the numbers for you. Let me read the numbers for you. Now, this is going to be telling. So, let me read the numbers. Adrian Broner, Jax, 51 to 214 at 21, 24%. Taylor, 56 of 266. Adrian Broner, power punches, 150 of 310, 48%. Taylor, 125 of 389. Total punches, 524 for uh, uh, through by Broner and 655 for Taylor. Now, Adrian Broner was in a very close fight. Adrian Broner was cut for the first time in his career. Adrian Broner was, was in a fight where I felt 
if he don't knock Emmanuel Taylor down at least once, and I'm sorry, I said he ain't hurt nobody. Yes, he did knock Emmanuel Taylor down in the 12th round, in the last minute of the 12th round. If he didn't get that, I would have been highly critical of him. But him doing that, I'm like, okay, AB, we're moving up. But I still see him in a, as a prospect, and I still see him as a work in prospect. I mean, um, as a work in pro progress. But that, that punch output, man, and that foot movement, that's the thing, because when he's going up against a pressure fighter, like a Matisse, if he's calling him out, Adrian Broner likes to lay on the ropes, what he did multiple times in this fight. You've seen an Emmanuel Taylor, an Emmanuel Tans Emmanuel Taylor, transformer into a, tran you know, into a totally different fighter than what we used to. He turned into a pressure fighter, and also what was unique about this fight is that you saw, like you saw, and it wasn't until Al Bernstein pointed out well, I'm like, yo, that looked like the Madonna right hand. To whereas he was, it, it seems like he was practicing it. You know that overhand, crazy, awkward angle down right hand. You know where you're barely looking. He was trying to do the same thing, and he was hitting Adrian Broner with some crazy shots. But one thing about Broner is, you know, something's wrong with his jaw. If you notice, you know, he grows his beard in between fights. Something is wrong there. He don't look right, you know, anymore. It looks like it's like constantly swollen. And also, he's fighting his fights with his mouth open too, too much and too many times. But, once again, I'm a little hoarse. This is T-Street Controversy. Please subscribe. I cover every single major fight live. I'm going to be here in about another hour. You know, I'm doing a live, a live post-fight discussion chat. Whatever you want to call it. Streaming. That's if you're watching this video on September the, uh, 7th now, 12th, 24th Eastern Standard Time. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live.